In 1830, not too far from where Cincinnati, Ohio is now, there was a very big forest that seemed to go on forever. Some people had settled in this area, but many had left for places further west. But among those who stayed was a man who came there a long time ago. He lived by himself in a log house surrounded by the forest. He looked like he was part of the dark and quiet forest because he never smiled or talked much. He got what he needed by selling animal skins in town. His small log house had one door and a window on the other side, but the window was closed with boards. No one knew why it was closed, and it had been like that for a very long time. I think not many people alive today know why. But I do, and I will tell you. People said his name was Moloch. He looked like he was 70 years old, but he was actually 50. Something other than just age made him look old. His hair and beard were white, and his eyes were dull and deep. His face was wrinkled. He was tall and thin, like someone with many problems. I never saw him, but my grandfather told me about him when I was a boy. My grandfather knew him when they lived nearby a long time ago. One day, Malak was found dead in his cabin. Back then, there were no doctors or newspapers like we have now. People probably thought he died from natural causes, or someone would have told me. I only know that he was buried near his cabin, next to where his wife was buried. She had died many years before him, so people didn't remember much about her. That's the end of the true story, except for something that happened many years later. I was brave and went to the cabin ruins and threw a stone at it. I ran away because I thought there might be a ghost there. All the boys in the area knew about it. But there's more to the story that my grandfather told me. When Malak built his cabin, he was young and strong. He worked hard to make a farm and he hunted to support himself. He also had a wife, a good and loving woman. She was brave and cheerful, even in dangerous times. We don't know her name, but they loved each other a lot and were happy. One day, after he had been hunting far away, Malak came back to find his wife very sick. She was confused and had a fever. There were no doctors or neighbors nearby. He couldn't leave her alone, so he tried to take care of her. But after three days, she fell unconscious and died. From what we know about Moloch, we can guess some details from my grandfather's story. When he was sure she was dead, Moloch knew he had to prepare her body for burial. He made some mistakes while doing this. He did some things wrong and had to do other things over and over. He was surprised that he didn't cry and he felt a bit ashamed. It's usually sad to not cry when someone dies. Tomorrow, he said loudly, I'll need to make a box for her and dig a hole in the ground. And then, when she's not here anymore, I'll feel her absence. But for now, she's gone, but it's okay, it has to be okay somehow. Things can't be as bad as they seem. He stood by his wife's body as the light was disappearing. He arranged her hair and made some final touches. He did it without really thinking, but with care. Yet in his mind, he felt that everything was okay that he'd have her back like before, and everything would make sense. 
Moloch hadn't experienced such deep sadness before. He couldn't handle all the feelings. His mind couldn't grasp it. He didn't know how deeply he was affected. He'd realize that later and never forget. Deep sadness affects people differently. It can hit someone like a sudden shock, making all emotions more intense. To others, it's like a heavy blow. Malak might have been affected that way. After he finished his tasks, he sat down next to the table where his wife lay. He noticed how pale her face looked in the growing darkness. He rested his arms on the table and buried his face in them without tears and very tired. Then a long, eerie sound came through the open window. It was like the cry of a lost child deep in the dark forest. But he didn't move. He heard that strange cry again, closer this time. Maybe it was an animal or perhaps just a dream. Malak was asleep. Hours later, he woke up, lifted his head, and listened carefully. He didn't know why. In the dark, beside his wife's body, he remembered everything without being shocked. He strained his eyes to see he wasn't sure what. His senses were alert. He held his breath. His blood seemed to pause, adding to the silence. Who or what had woken him up, and where was it? Suddenly, the table moved under his arms. At the same time, he heard or thought he heard light, soft footsteps, one after the other. Like someone walking barefoot on the floor. He was so scared that he couldn't cry out or move. He waited, waiting in the darkness for what felt like a very long time. A kind of fear that one can understand but still survive. He tried but couldn't say his wife's name. He tried but couldn't stretch his hand across the table to see if she was there. His throat was paralyzed. His arms and hands felt heavy. Then something terrible happened. It seemed like a heavy weight hit the table, pushing against his chest. He also heard and felt something fall onto the floor. It was such a loud crash that the whole house shook. There was a struggle and a mix of sounds that can't be described. Malak got up. Extreme fear made him lose control. He put his hands on the table, but there was nothing there. Fear can turn into madness, and madness makes you act. Acting like a madman, Malak ran to the wall without a plan. He grabbed his loaded rifle and fired it without aiming. The rifle's flash lit up the room brightly. He saw a big, fierce panther dragging his wife toward the window. The animal's teeth were on her throat. Then it got darker than before, and everything was quiet. When he woke up again, the sun was high, and the forest was full of singing birds. His wife's body was near the window where the animal had left it when scared off by the light and gunshot. Her clothes were ruined. Her long hair was messy. Her arms and legs were positioned carelessly. Blood was flowing from her terribly torn throat. The ribbon he used to tie her wrists was broken. Her hands were clenched tightly. And there was a piece of the animal's ear between her teeth. 